Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. We continue writing our chat application that uses WebSockets for communication. At the end of the last video, we had much of the plumbing in place, but there's still a few small pieces that we need. And for one thing, nothing uh, came up here, but nothing crashed either. So let's go back to our application and let's go through what's happening. So we have a WebSocket. In the JavaScript, when they type stuff, it sends to the WebSocket. The WebSocket itself creates an, an actor every time that someone connects. We also have a manager here in this chat manager. And so when someone connects, they get hold of an output actor ref that messages should be sent back to and a manager actor ref. And the first thing they do is they tell the manager, hey, I'm here. Now, one thing we haven't done, when we get a message coming across the web from a client, we're not doing anything with it right now. We did have a print statement there earlier. What we actually want to do is we want to send this to the manager and tell them, hey, we got a new message. Here's the string. And so this will go then to our chat manager to this message, which also has not been written. So what should this do? Well, it should run through all the chatters and send them all messages to send out that particular message. Okay, so now when we get, when someone sends a message across the WebSocket, it will come into the actor here that will be sent to the manager. The manager will then send it out to all of the chat actors, including the one that had sent it, and they will all say, send it to their outputs. Okay, so I think that the Scala side of this is pretty complete. Now all that we're lacking is a little bit more JavaScript to make it so that the last pieces are in place. And really all we're missing is the fact that when the socket receives a message, we need to add it to our chat area. So the socket has a, an on message that we can set equal to an event. Oops. Okay. This technically also got an event, but we weren't using it for anything. So this will get an event and that event has data inside of it. And so what we want to do is we want to take our output area and its value, which is the text inside of it. We want to append onto that a new line because if we don't stick new lines, then yeah, it'll just be one really long line of text along with the data for this particular event. So whatever got sent to us, we're just going to add it on uh, to our output. Okay, so we send things when they type. We got a new user connected uh, there, and theoretically we should see this first. So when we refresh, boom, new user connected. Okay, well, that's nice, but that doesn't actually prove this is chatting. Let's go ahead and let's open another tab that goes to the same place. This says new user connected, and look over here, we get a new user connected. So let's type something in on the second window, and that comes over here. First window, and that goes over there. And there we go. So we've created a fairly simple little chat app. There's quite a few details that, that we haven't uh, worked with here, but this is enough to show you how you can work with WebSockets in play. And the key is that every WebSocket gets an actor that has the ability to send things back out, uh, and it's using actor parallelism. Once again, if you haven't, if you aren't familiar with actor parallelism, uh, you don't need to know that much about it in order to, to work with this, but it helps to know something. The key is that when you send 
actor's messages. That's what this bang does. It's sending a message to the actor. When, when you do that, that message goes into an inbox and one message at a time is processed. There is a single, basically the actor doesn't have two threads simultaneously working through it. It processes messages one at a time. Now, if I have a hundred different actors, they can all be processing messages, but any given actor will only be processing one at a time. That is what allows me in here to do, it's actually, it's this operation right here, which isn't really, if there were multiple threads, this wouldn't be very thread safe. And so when our application has a whole bunch of new people connecting, this could have caused some type of interesting race condition where some people were dropped. But thanks to the nature of actor parallelism, this var, this mutation, will only happen inside of a single thread at a time. And so this is a safe thing to do. Uh, and that's, that's part of the reason why it was chosen to use Akka of, under the, the underlying part of, of play to make this all so it works happily. So there's your brief introduction. You can take this and write all types of other things. Basically, anytime you need kind of two-way communication between the client and the server, WebSockets are, are a good way to do that. If all you need is the client to request information from the server, then just stick with Ajax. But if you come into the situation where you need the server to be able to send things out, which once again, that's, that's what we needed here. The, the key is that when I type something in this window, this window didn't ask for that information. I think actually I lost my, uh, yep, I asked for my, my WebSocket closed and we didn't add code that would, that would maintain it. Um, but when we type something in one, it automatically got sent to the other without having to wait for, for it to pull it or do, do frequent requests or anything like that. We'll come back after this and we will start working on our fourth version of the task list, uh, which will go back to using Ajax, but it will use React for the client side.